Hey guys, I've received this amazing printer from tattooskin.com. That's tattoo number two skin.com. I'm super excited because this is an $840 printer with ink fuel that's going to go into this Canon GM 2050 printer. I'm going to show you all how it works right here on the floaty channel. Let's see if this thing is worth the price. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's take a look. Tattoo skin, oh yeah. Cool little sticker there. Thank you, dear client, thank you very much for your order. The trust you put in our company means the world to us and we hope that you find our products helpful, efficient, and ideal for your needs. We would love to hear any feedback you might have and welcome to post your thoughts online through our social media pages, Tattoo Skin. How to apply the sketch to the skin using stencil stuff. In order to get the best result, apply a thin layer of stencil stuff lubricant on the desired area. Course, I'm sure you can use whatever stencil solution that you want. Stencil stuff lubricant should be applied slightly beyond that sketch area. Make sure stencil stuff lubricant is applied gently in a very thin layer until it feels sticky on the skin. After a few seconds, apply the sketch transfer paper on the skin, but do not press too hard. Press gently all over the sketch area until the skin, onto the skin. Peel off the sketch transfer paper. Wait about 10 minutes for stencil sketch to dry before starting. I don't see anything different here than a normal process. So it sounds the same. It says, uh, make sure you read the manual to set it up. Fill in ink fuel stencil liquid slowly into the ink tank using the included funnel. The printer will start printing out in black. That's because the original print head have residue of black ink. Therefore, it is needed to do one or both of the following steps. Print out multiple full pages with big dark sketches, around 10 to 15 copies, to drain out the remaining black ink out of the print head. You can use regular papers for that, no need to waste stencil sheets. Okay. Use Canon IJ Printer Assistant Tool or go to Printer Manage, Printing Preferences, Maintenance, Perform, Ink Flush. All right, so we're going to have some steps here, obviously. It's good to read up to know how we're going to turn this printer into a stencil printer. Because it doesn't come that way, we have to do some things here. Before each print, place a single stencil sheet on top of a pile of 20 regular A4 sheets inside the paper tray. That's in order to prevent paper jam, which can be caused since the stencil sheets are thinner and the printer tends to draw several pages at once. If lines appear on stencil print, change printer preferences to high print quality and A4 paper size. All right, I see a cord here. Exciting. Got that little funnel they mentioned, a little tattoo skin logo. Boom, there's the ink fuel. So the ink fuel is what's going to replace the normal black ink that goes into this printer. And there you go. They gave us a nice bottle of stencil stuff, four ounces to use for a process. So that is very nice. Aha, uh -huh. and take a look at this. This is the A4 printer we just read about. This is the actual stencil paper that we are gonna print on with the ink fuel. So that should be great. We got 500 sheets of that, that is quite a lot for this package, so that's awesome. So we have the power cord here and we have the USB connection for your computer. The power cord has an adapter. We want to change this to this. There it goes. All right, now we are in America. They have sent a little surgical ruler and a skin pen as well. All right, and here's the printer.
first remove the orange tape, it is time to try to use this printer. Um, we want to do those directions and print off a few uh, prints to get the ink out of the printer first. So the first thing we want to do is put the ink peel into the printer. Okay, we are going to put some gloves on so we don't get ourselves messy. I've opened up this lid here. And here is the ink tank. There's actually a little diagram. If you need some guidance, I'm just going to open this up and this is the opening here of the ink tank. All right, I got a new angle for you guys to take a look at what I'm doing here. I'll just show you that diagram again. So you open that part and then you open this part. This is very narrow. It doesn't come out. So this is something we're going to have to work around. I'm going to do that with this funnel. They say to pour very slowly. so far. I'm just doing little pours. I was very careful to put the tip of my funnel in a certain direction as well. The long tip of my funnel I have towards the outer edge of the tank opening. Oh, no problem. All right, I'm gonna close this up. Good. So before we go on, we need to install this print head. Uh, here it is, it was also in the box. I forgot to show it to you guys. All right, so we're gonna open this up. pieces of tape to remove. All right, let's open this up. So in order to get this print head inside, we should remove this orange thing here. Push this down, lift that up. You want this strip facing the machine. We're going to hold it this side up it in there and just close it. All right, it looks like we're all set. It does recommend that you do this before pouring the ink. I don't know if that matters. We did it the opposite way around, but it should be ready to go and ready to plug in and get things printed. Okay guys, so it's time to try printing here. We're going to first load some paper. Uh, we've got just regular computer paper here. We're not going to put in the nice stencil paper for this beginning part because we're just going to be kind of getting rid of that old ink. We're going to remove the cassette from the printer, which is right in front here. I'm just going to put it on top so you can see. And we're going to put the paper in this cassette. And it's set to A4 now, bottom. All right, so we've got it in the A4 position and the paper's fitting, regular computer paper. Now we are going to replace the cassette. Pretty easy. And lastly, we're gonna pull out the paper output tray. Which has a little doohickey there. Next thing we have to do is connect to our, in this case, we're gonna use our iPad. All right, you can also connect to a computer, smartphone, 
whatever you want. So we're going to first go and get the app that we need. We're gonna to go to the section about connecting to a smartphone. There is a QR code right here. And that's taking us to the Canon website here where we're going to download the app. We have two options here. We have uh, iPad users, so let's go to that one. And there you go. So that's what the app looks like in the App Store. Terms and uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Must agree to this to use. It's asking if we would like to connect to our network. We're gonna allow that. We're gonna ask them not to try. All right, so now we are here. We're going to, I think we have to turn on the printer. There's all plugged in now. We're gonna hit this power button right here. So it asked me finally if I want to join the Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to join there. We're here now. Um, there's the uh, list of wireless routers. I'm just going to click on mine. And now it wants the uh, password for our Wi-Fi. All right. So now that that has completed, you should see this screen here. Now choose your favorite photo and try it out. Awesome. So we've gotten to the point we want. We're gonna go to select images. It's asking me if I wanna look from my smartphone or if I want to import or use cloud services. I'm gonna just check on, I'm gonna call this my smartphone. Yes, and it's bringing up my pictures. It wants us to choose a complicated stencil to print. The following paper is selected. Do you want to check the online manual for instructions on how to replace your paper? A4. No, we are good. So we're going to confirm that and just go ahead and say yes. Uh, no, I, I mean no, huh? <laughs> so confirm that it's A4. Yes, it is. And uh, we don't need to change the paper in the printer. Now we are here in uh, the print preview and there's an option to print. So let's go ahead and try. Print with the following printer for the first time. Please confirm. Okay. Okay, we got it going here. Made sure that our uh, print head was properly installed. We did get that alarm button. It flashed five times. The manual said to uh, check the printer head and we did that. The blue spring was uh, out so we pushed that in and now it seems like it's printing. Page three of the manual has your troubleshooting with that alarm button and what it means for all the different flashes. All right here we go and we're off. It's done its thing and now it's printing. Wow printing really nice already. Uh, I guess we're getting rid of the old black in the machine still. So they've asked us to print at least, I believe it was 10 to 15 copies. Uh, there it is again of um, kind of a dense page with big dark sketches it says. All right, so let's keep going with that. So you can do two things to get rid of the ink. You uh, can either do the 10 to 15 prints or you can do the ink flush. Um, we're doing the prints, but I'm guessing if it doesn't work, we might have to also do an ink flush. It looks pretty good though. Okay, we've done 15 prints. I still see some banding in the image. All right, so let's try to make an actual print on the stencil paper. All right, I'm grabbing a piece of this stencil paper right here. And it says just put a single piece on top of the stack of 20 pages. Up there, and the 
let's try this out. All right, so the reason for all those sheets is to prevent a paper jam. So hopefully that works out. I'm going to print a little stencil. Okay, it did pick up the correct paper, so that's good news. So um, we were able to print right on um, the, stencil, the stencil paper. There is a little band here at the top, probably because it's our first print, but I got some, uh, this lotus at the bottom looks pretty good. Looks pretty purple too. Um, so I think that one might actually transfer. Let's cut it out and see. All right, you'll want to have your gloves on. Uh, the surface of the paper does have stencil solution on it now, so it will smudge, which I did just a little. All right, but still intact. There's my little stencil. I need an arm to do this on. May I borrow a less hairy side? Oh, I'll do the top of your hand. There we go. <laughs> We have that stencil solution they sent us. Cover a larger area than what we need. Make sure we get a good coverage. I'd say we got a nice stick there, and that stencil solution seems to be fully um, saturating the paper because that image looks completely whole. So I think, yeah, there it is. It's working out. So we're just going to let this dry on LT's hand, give that 10 minutes, and then we're going to tattoo it. All right, it's been 10 minutes, and here is my husband's hand with the stencil. It's still on there really well. It is not smudging whatsoever with my finger. That thing is really on there. So he's not gonna get this tattoo today, but um, I might just use the stencil printer for his next tattoo. So, thank you. Okay, uh, we, I just loaded in another piece of paper. I wanna try something a little more challenging. So now we're gonna just print um, this stencil that brought to my show. I'm going to see if I can make it a little bigger even. All right, let's try it out. I want to see that it gets good detail, resolution. Okay. All right, guys, so here is the print from this printer. Um, I have done this print on other stencil machines and they were nowhere near as detailed as this one has come out. Just give you a second with that. The resolution and the tiny details of the diamonds in the archways here is amazing. All those little areas are just perfect. So uh, the resolution is the highest I've ever seen. Uh, it way beats the thermal printers. That's why we are interested in these types of printers, especially um, for high resolution 
work like portraits and things like that we do like those tiny details to get in there i am very impressed especially with the fur details on this one that was something that was hard for the thermal printer to really uh, grasp as well i feel like the fur details are very clear on here so very nice excellent excellent quality i was able to zoom in a little on the image easily and um, manipulate the app no problem obviously the stencil solution works really well because it's uh, not expanding too much and it's staying nice on my husband's hand so the details should transfer well onto your client so that is important just because it actually shows up with detail here doesn't mean that our stencil solution or something else might get in the way but the combination of the stencil stuff um, with the ink fuel seems to be fantastic uh, that ink seems to be staying in place and not spreading too much past the original design so that is very impressive so yes very nice resolution and amazing performance another wonderful thing about the tattoo skin is that you can replace the printer head you hear it moving around right now that's the thing that we installed in the first place some of these printers you can't actually change the printer head which means that if something goes wrong with it you have to just throw it away which is very costly um, in the case of the tattoo skin you can get the printer head replacement online for about 43 dollars much cheaper so i really do think this is a great printer it is the best one that i've seen um, like this because of that replaceable printer head so i feel good recommending this one to you this is from tattooskin.com that's tattooskin and you can use our uh, link in the description below to find it thank you guys so much for watching this review i'll have more about this printer in the future don't forget to like and subscribe bye thank you bye